Blessed is the virgin who by denying herself and taking up her cross imitated the Lord, the spouse of virgins and prince of martyrs. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. God of our fathers, who brought the martyr Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross to know your crucified Son and to imitate him even until death, grant through her intercession that the whole human race may acknowledge Christ as its Savior and through him come to behold you for eternity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Nahum. See, upon the mountains there advances the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Celebrate your feasts, O Judah, fulfill your vows, for never more shall you be invaded by the scoundrel. He is completely destroyed. The Lord will restore the vine of Jacob, the pride of Israel. Though ravished Ravagers have ravaged them and ruined the tendrils. Woe to the bloody city, all lies, full of plunder, whose looting never stops. The crack of the whip, the rumbling of sounds of wheels, horses a gallop, a gallop chariots bounding, cavalry charging, the flame of the sword, the flash of the spear, the many slain, the heaping corpses, the endless bodies to stumble upon. I will cast filth upon you, disgrace you, and put you to shame, till everyone who sees you runs from you, saying, Nineveh is destroyed, who can pity her? Where can one find any to console her? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is I who deal death and give life. It is I who deal death and give life. Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who deal death and give life. Learn then that I, I alone, am God, and there is no God besides me. It is I who bring both death and life, I who inflict wounds and heal them. It is I who deal death and give life. I will sharpen my flashing sword, and my hand shall lay hold of my quiver. With vengeance I will repay my foes and requite those who hate me. It is I who deal death and give life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay each according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself take up his cross and follow me. Over time, the word self has gained meanings that it didn't used to have. Originally, it is a simple referent to the subject of a sentence. And it distinguishes one individual from a group or a private good from a common good. Now, it has all these other connotations such as one's identity or personality or inward self, something like that, the interior identity. Given that shaded meaning in our modern context, this phrase comes off as quite stark and surprising. Whoever is just to come after me must deny himself. Well, are we to deny our personalities deny our identities? Do we somehow have to beat ourselves up in order to follow Christ? But no, if we understand it as the denial of one's own private good in favor of the common good, then it starts to be more uplifting. Because you see, there is no contradiction between the common good and the private good, and they are not opposed to each other. For instance, two children of the same mother, it's my mother and your mother, and those are not opposed. The mother is a common good, and they both benefit equally. So too, the common good in a society is the order within it, and everyone benefits precisely by following the common norms. And if anyone has the idea that they want to benefit for their own sake, contradistinction to that common good, then the common good suffers, and so does the one who no longer participates in it. This is what our Lord means when he wishes us to deny ourselves. It's so that we can have a good that we benefit from more than if we only thought about our own private good. But we benefit privately from serving the common good. This is what is meant by whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Because if I think only about myself and I place the end of all my actions as how it benefits me, then I cease to care about others, and I will lose the very thing that I desire because I will not benefit as much from that common good and the well-being that comes from it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If I have more care for the church, for the worship of God together with others and their char the charity towards them, then not only are they happier, but I am happier because I am rejoicing in their good as though it were my own, for indeed it is. And this is how, in sacrificing 
one's own private judgments and one's own private ends. We start to gain a life that we cannot have otherwise. We gain the whole world because I rejoice in the good that I see around me as though it were my own good. We celebrate St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross today who gave her life for the sake of the church and her people. The virtue of fortitude was strong in her, infused by God, and fortitude is a virtue that gives us courage to face fear, especially the fear of death, to overcome one's own fear of death, the clinging on to one's individual life for the sake of a life that is to come, a better life, the life of the saints together with God in heaven. She knew that it is not the length of our life that makes it a good one, but rather the quality of that life which is found in virtue. And so, through the intercession of St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, may we learn what true self-denial is, always having a care for the common good and those around us, and to know that that is not in opposition to our private enjoyment or good. And so may we come to gain a life that is even better than what we have imagined because we are caring for ch in charity for all those whom we meet. Let us pray. For unity in the church, may the Lord guide her leaders and people in coming together stronger than ever in the mission to spread the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in positions of authority, may the wisdom and grace of the Holy Spirit be their stronghold and guide. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who bear the burden of discrimination and prejudice, may they feel strength in the Lord's embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. For Angelita David, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all of us, may we evangelize in, every, in our everyday lives through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of faith, may the mercy of God bring them to live in the eternal light of Christ together with the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you for hearing us and helping us with the crosses we bear. We ask that you hear our prayers and look upon them favorably through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of blessed Teresa Benedicta of the Cross win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Osanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, O Sahana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting health. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lamb who is at the center of the throne will lead them to the springs of the waters of life.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Teresa Benedicta of the Cross a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament that, bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, prowl about the world to gain the ruin of souls. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more.